Welcome back to video 8 in our series on more SQL. We're going to proceed to discuss schema evolution. Let's get started. Schema evolution commands are available in SQL, which can be used to alter a schema by adding or dropping tables, attributes, constraints, and other schema elements. This can be done while the database is operational and does not require recompilation of the database schema. Certain checks must be done by the database management system to ensure that the changes do not affect the rest of the database and make it inconsistent. The drop command can be used to drop named schema elements such as tables, domains, constraints, and views. One can also drop a schema. For example, if the whole schema is no longer needed, the drop schema command be used. There are two drop behavior options, cascade and restrict. For example, to remove the company database schema and all of its tables, domains, and other elements, the cascade option can be used, like we see below here. Drop schema company cascade. If the restrict option is chosen in place of cascade, the schema is dropped only if it has no elements in it. Otherwise, the drop command will not be executed. So if you use restrict, that's going to require one to go in and, and initiate separate drop statements for each of the elements within that database then drop the schema itself. If a base relation within the schema is no longer needed, or a table, base table, the relation and its definition can be deleted by using drop table. Notice that the drop table command not only deletes all the records in the table if successful, but also removes the table definition from the catalog. If it is desired to delete only the records but leave the table definition for future use, then the delete command should be used instead of drop table. The definition of a base table or of other name schema elements can be changed using the alter command. For base tables, the possible alter table actions include adding or dropping a column or an attribute, changing a column definition, and adding or dropping table constraints. We can add a column as demonstrated in this example below, alter table company dot employee, add column job, and of data type varchar12 semicolon and that will add a column job to the employee table. We must still enter a value for the new attribute job for each individual employee tuple. This can be done either by specifying a default clause or by using the update command individually on each tuple. If no default clause is specified, the new attribute will have nulls in all the tuples of the relation immediately after the command is executed. Therefore, the not null constraint is not allowed in this case. We see here that we can alter the table company.employee, drop a constraint named employee super foreign key cascade. Well, look at this. We have finished our series of lectures on SQL. We haven't even talked about a mystery word, have we? Let's make our mystery word alter. Go ahead and submit it. Go out and check your knowledge on the information we learned in this video. And then start preparing for the test on SQL that will be coming up shortly.